Income tax 2021-2022. Interest you paid part number one. Get ready to get refunds to the max. Diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found on the Schedule A 2021 tax year instructions found on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. We're looking at the itemized deductions, keeping those straight in our mind or distinct from the adjustments to income or the above the line deductions the schedule one deductions deductions for adjusted gross income also noting the itemized deductions will always be compared to the standard deduction typically taking the one that is higher because that will have the biggest tax benefit so we're down here in line number 12 first page of the form 1040 standard deduction or itemized deduction we're only going to be taking the one <clears throat> that is greater standard deductions list listed on the left hand side itemized deductions needing to clear those items and those amounts in order to take the itemized deductions here's the schedule a itemized deductions we have the itemized items on the left hand side the general groups or categories the sum of all these items then if greater than the standard deduction would flow through to the line 12a of the first page of the form 1040 here's just a list of the standard deductions you want to have a general idea of so you can get a feel for when itemizing will be necessary and when it will not possibly be necessary due to take in the standard deduction so now we're talking about interest that is paid so certain types of interest then may be deductible the most prominent of them most likely being the mortgage interest so remember that that's one of the big ones so when you're thinking about whether or not someone's going to itemize or not the one of the things you want to ask is do you own a home most people that own a home have a mortgage on the home and there's going to be a significant amount of interest most likely paid on that and there's property taxes that will be tied to it so that's going to be one of uh, the biggest types of deductions so the rules for deducting interest vary depending on whether the loan proceeds are used for business personal or investment activities now note that if we have a loan that's going to be taken out normally that the normal thing that you would think about for an income tax would be that if you had something that was going to be business related or you needed an expense in order to help you to generate revenue then you would think it'd be kind of a, a deductible item if you have something that is for personal use you would think it not be deductible so in general if you had a car that was used for example for your personal use then you would think that that would not be deductible because the car in that case is not something that you're using in order to help you to generate revenue however if you think about a car that's being used specifically with within your business in order to generate revenue you would think that the costs of the car might be something that would be deductible like the gas and the depreciation and so on and so forth similar with financing which is basically what the interest is if your financing is for the business for example like on a schedule c type of business for example possibly and you got the financing the purchasing power of the money which is what you needed to get in order to say buy inventory buy equipment for your business you would think that would be a deductible expense needed in order to generate revenue if on the other hand the interest was, was for something that was for purely personal use you got a loan to buy you know a sports car that's you know that's just a car for your personal use then you would think that the interest would not be deductible because it's a personal type of expense in that in that case and of course the exception to that is the residence the primary residence is that unusual kind of acceptance or exception because the government wanted to kind of incentivize people to purchasing homes or at least that was the argument you might say that there was lobbyists involved as well all over the home production and so on and everything that's related to that but general idea then would be we want to incentivize, pe incentivize people to have a home one way to do that is possibly to give the deduction for the loan possibly allowing them to take a, a larger loan out so that's so that then is an exception because you would think that for the personal use of the home it wouldn't be something that would be deductible because it's not a loan specifically the interest not being used specifically to generate revenue but for the personal side but of course that personal deduction is one of those big ones uh, that that is kind of an exception to what you would think would be the normal rule so we have business personal investment activities investment activities are similar in that if you took out a loan in order to generate revenue if it was investment revenue you would think it still possibly could be something that would be deductible as a normal practice under 
uh, just an income tax. Okay, so you can see publication 535 for more information about deducting business uh, interest expenses. So you can get into the business interest expenses there. The rules you would think would be a little bit more straightforward there. Obviously, if you took out a loan and it was for business-related items, then you would think you'd be able to deduct the, the interest. There's rules with regards to timing and so on uh, as to when you can deduct the interest and that kind of stuff. However, so see publication 550 for more information about deducting investment interest expenses. Uh, you can't deduct personal interest, so that would be the general rule. If it was personal use, if you had any kind of expense that you expended for personal use, if you went to Disneyland or something like that you can't typically deduct it the same if you took a loan out in order to pay for the going to Disneyland you would think that you can't really deduct that typically however you can deduct qualified home mortgage interest on your schedule a so there's the exception big exception for a personal use type of thing that you might get a deduction for on the schedule a and interest on certain student loans so student loans another big exception that government carving out these exceptions for things that it likes or it wants to incentivize or it thinks it's going to be beneficial. So you, you could argue whether or not it's it has actually had a positive impact or if it just subsidized the market and adjusted the prices and made things more complex from an economic standpoint. But, you know, that's the argument. So that's on Schedule 1, Form 1040, Line 21, as explained in Publication 936 and Publication 970. If you use the proceeds of a loan for more than one purpose, for example, personal and business, you must allocate the interest on the loan to each use. So you don't typically want to do that, but sometimes you can't really avoid it doing that. So for example, if we took a loan out on the home and then we use the home in order to conduct our personal business like a schedule c business you might have a situation where you need to allocate then between the amount that would be deductible possibly on a schedule c and the amount that would be deductible possibly on the schedule a you can't double dip they're taking the same two deductions for the same amount that was paid but possibly there would be more beneficial deductions on one or the other taking them on the schedule c or the schedule a uh, interest you paid you allocate interest on a loan in the same way as the loan is allocated you do this by tracing disbursements of the debt proceeds to specific uses so you might ask well how am i going to do that well we're going to try to say well how are the loan proceeds used the loan so if you borrowed a hundred thousand dollars how would how were the proceeds of that used and use that same kind of ratio analysis to allocate the loan when we get to uh the schedule c business we might talk about a home loan I, i'm sorry home business deduction or a deduction of the home office and in that case we'll get into that in a little bit more detail where you might apply kind of a ratio type of analysis to try to figure out how much of the home is used for personal versus business for more information on allocating interest you can see publication 535 in general if you paid interest in 2021 that applies to any period after 2021 you can deduct only amounts that apply for 2021 so we get into the same kind of cutoff type of thing because we're basically on a cash basis method for taxes, but a cash basis method can be abused if people have cash flow because they could try to start to prepay things. So you might say, well, what if I tell the bank I'll prepay all the interest and I'll pay it right now and I'll try to get the deduction today because I need the deduction. Maybe I'm in a higher tax bracket this year or something like that. Well, the, the IRS is going to be skeptical of that kind of thing uh to to do that so so you can't so they're gonna have to put limits on they're gonna say it's a cash basis method and or in order to take the deduction you have to have actually spent the cash generally and you're going to get the deduction when you spend the cash generally but we have to put in safeguards so people don't abuse a cash basis method by basically you know possibly prepaying a, a large amount in one time period to to uh, to to even out you know their income and get possibly deductions earlier than they otherwise would under you know what you would think with normal or fair conditions with regards to a loan so schedule a use schedule a to deduct qualified home mortgage interest and investment interest that's going to be the itemized deductions home mortgage interest so here's the big one home mortgage interest this is the one that it usually has documentation for it's usually pretty easy after the first initial purchase of the home the first purchase can be a little little confusing in the year of the purchase because you might want to look 
at the closing documentation to see that everything lines up. But after that, you should get documentation on it and it's pretty easy to do the data input, but it's gonna be one of those big itemized deductions that might push people over to itemizing as opposed to standard deduction. So if you are a homeowner who received assistance under a state housing finance agency hardest hit fund program or an emergency homeowners loan program, you can see publication 530 for the amount you can deduct on line 8A or 8B. A home mortgage is any loan that is secured by your main home or second home regardless of how the loan is labeled so it could be so we're talking about something that is secured meaning when you take out the loan you're taking out the loan and the home is security now that's a little bit different than a lot of people kind of think about it they think about like the the bank owns part of your home right they say the equity you talk about equity how much equity do you have in the home and people tend to use this terminology like how much does the bank own of the home that's not exactly you know the right way you know you might think of it because you actually own the home it would be kind of like you took out the loan and then you took the loan to pay off uh, the purchase of the home but if you were to default on the loan then that's that's when the home could be used then to pay off that the lender can come back and have recourse possibly for the home in order to pay off the loan. The reason it's different, by the way, the reason it's not like, well, the bank owns part of your home in that case is because the bank doesn't have any say of what you do with the home until and unless you default, you stop making the payments. So it's not like the bank's going to say, hey, I own 70% of the home because you have this big loan that's out on it. And therefore, I would like you to paint the home blue or something like that. And you're like, no, I want to paint it brown. And they're like, no, I own, you know, that's not how it is, right? They don't own the home. They have no rights over the use of the home. They only have recourse to not paying back the debt in the event that there's a default under specific circumstances. So it's a little bit different. But in any case, that's, that's going to be the idea. And that would be the thing that would allow it to be... Uh, possibly deductible. It includes first and second mortgages, home equity loans, and refinancing mortgages. A home can be a house, condominium, uh, corporative, uh, mobile home, boat, or similar property. So fairly expansive definition on, you know, what a home is. Basically, if you're living in it, you know, it could be, you know, <laughs> pretty much a home, right? It could be mobile, so on, a boat, and so on. So it must provide basic living accommodations, including sleeping space, toilet, and cooking facilities. So you got to have you know the you got to have that toilet in there if you're going out to the outhouse then it may not qualify as the, the home's home. got to be a, you yeah, got to have the stuff in there typically so home mortgage interest uh, check the box on line 8 if you had one or more home mortgage home mortgage interest home mortgages in 2021 with an outstanding balance and you didn't use all of your home mortgage proceeds for those loans to buy build or substantially improve your home so now we get kind of into the weeds with uh, the home loans because now you could start to say, okay, I can imagine a situation where I wanted to purchase the home. I took out a loan in order to make the purchase of the home. But what if I take a secondary loan out, like I take a loan out in the future? Well, if you refinanced it, just basically to refinance and get a lower rate, then you would think you'd still be basically using the proceeds on the home. But what if... Like I took something that I, I used the home as the collateral, uh, but I wanted to buy a, a sports car with it or with the money or something like that. Well, now it's a little bit different because now you didn't use the money to invest in the home, either to just refinance it for better interest rates or increase the value of the home. You now basically use the home as collateral to financial personal purchase. And so that gets a little bit, you know, that, that's where the difference basically comes in here. So interest paid on home mortgage proceeds used for other purposes isn't deductible on line 8A or 8B. So see limits on home mortgage interest later for more information about what interest you can, can include on line 8A and 8B. Uh, if you use any home mortgage proceeds for a business or investment purpose, interest you paid that is allocable to these proceeds may still be deductible as a business or investment expense elsewhere on your return. So we got, remember the categories that we have here, we're looking at the home at this point in time. And then you could also have the category of the business or investment. 
which are the categories which you would think would be kind of more natural in regards to taking out a loan, possibly getting the deduction, because those things are used in order to try to generate revenue, whereas, you know, personal things are for personal, including the home, but the home is kind of that exception. So limit for loan proceeds not used to buy, build, or substantially improve your home. You can only deduct home mortgage interest to the extent that the loan proceeds from your home mortgage are used to buy, build, or substantially improve the home, securing the loan qualifying debt. So that's going to be qualifying debt. Uh, make sure to check the box on on line eight if you had one or more home mortgages in 2021 with an outstanding balance and you didn't use all the loan proceeds to buy, build, or substantially improve the home. The only exception to this limit is for loans taken out or before October 13th, 1987. The loan proceeds for these loans are treated as having been used to buy, build, or substantially improve the home. You can see publication 936. You can find that on the IRS website for more information about loans taken out on or before October 13th, 1987. Home mortgage interest line eight, a limit on loans taken out on or before December 15th, 2017 for qualifying debt taken out on or before December 15th, 2017. You can only deduct home mortgage interest up to uh, $1 million, 500,000 if you are uh, married filing separately of that debt. The only exception for loans taken out on or before October 13th, 1987, see publication 936 for more information about loans taken out on or before October 13th, 1987. You could also see publication 936 to figure your deduction if you have loans taken out on or before December 15th, 2017 that exceed $1 million or 500,000 if married filing separately. So you've got that limit and then the question is, well, what happens if it's over the limit? How do I do that calculation? Limit on loans taken out uh, after December 15th, 2017. For qualifying debt taken out uh, after December 15th, 2017, you can only deduct home mortgage interest on up to 750,375,000 dollars if you are married filing separately of that debt. So they adjusted the limit here. Uh, if you also have qualified debt subject to the 1 million limitation discussed under limit on loans taken out on or before December 15th, 2017, earlier, the 750,000 limit uh, for debt taken out after December 15th, 2017 is reduced by the amount of your qualifying debt subject to the $1 million limit. An exception exists for certain loans taken out after December 15th, 2017, but before April 1st, 2018, if the exception applies, your loan may be treated in the same manner as a loan taken out on or before December 15th, 2017. You can see publication 936 for more detail there. See publication 936 to figure your deduction if you have loans taken out after October 13th, 1987 that exceed 750000 uh, 375000 if you are married uh, filing separately. So once again, you've got the question here being, let's take a look at the cap one more time. For, for qualifying debt taken out after December 15th, 2017, you can only deduct home mortgage interest on up to 750000 of that debt. So you're talking about the debt, not the interest of the 750,000. Now for most people, that would be that would be a, especially if you're not living in a high uh, income area or a high cost of living area, that would be a substantial amount of debt because that's not the home purchase amount. That's that's the amount of the debt, right? That's not the interest, but it's the amount of the debt, but it's not the purchase pr price either. It's the amount of the debt. So that would be a substantial amount of debt for most people, but if you go over that amount, then the question is, well, now I've got I've got debt that's over that amount. How do I calculate how much of the interest should I can take in the event that the debt is over the limit? And that's when you got to go into the publications and see how you can make that.